in the ICU, you know? He don't have COVID. He bought the last roll of toilet paper at Sam's Club before old ladies beat him after death in the parking lot with they walkers. <laughs> I, just, I just want somebody to say it's over, man. I'm tired of being in quarantine and locked up. I done watched everything on Netflix. Right? We all watched Squid Game and we had to read that. <laughs> that all about? I am a comic. I do not need to be in the house this long, right? I, I got stupid ideas when, you know, when you're a comic and you by yourself, you get stupid ideas. Like, I'm like, who should make movies? Uh, Mike Tyson, right? Because he returned to boxing last, you know, over the last year. I'm like, he don't need to box. He need to make movies. Specifically, vampire movies. Why? How funny would it be to see that man try to say Dracula? Oh my God, it's whack, it's whack, it's whack. It's, it's, it's the guy from Poinson, it's the guy from Poinson, Poinson, it's the guy that bite people. No, Mike, you are the guy that bite people. Could you see him walk in the room with Dracula? Dracula come out five minutes later like, blah! He bit me! <laughs> My name is Rob Coleman, like they said once again, man. I'm from Cleveland. Yes, Cleveland, yeah. Give it up for Cleveland, man. I love Cleveland. The only hard thing about being from Cleveland is like a punchline city. Like, you can put Cleveland in any joke, and it's funny. Breath so bad, smell like Cleveland. You know? We got good stuff here. What do you think it is? Cleveland? <laughs> you know? Even my GPS, I was going home one day and was like, give me directions to Cleveland. My GPS was like, are you sure you want to go there? <laughs> but I love being from Cleveland, man. The people from Cleveland are hardworking, man, and good people, man. Even with bad jobs, I ran into a guy, man, with a bad job who was just happy with it, right? He was a toilet cleaner. He was all on the top of it, all on the bottom, all inside of it. He finished and was like, how was that? I was like, great, but can I get off of it next time? <laughs> Doing your job too well. <laughs> People broke, but we know how to have fun. You know what I'm saying? You know how to have fun, bro. I went over to a friend of mine's house last weekend. He was having a housewarming party. He didn't buy a new house. He got his heat cut back on. But we went over there to party, celebrate. <laughs> we know how to have fun, bro. <laughs> I'm broke and got bad credit. <laughs> my credit's so bad the last dude to wrap my credit. Messed his credit up too. <laughs> I went to the bank, man. This is the most funny stuff ever when I go to the bank. Every time I apply for a loan, they have me in there sounding like Little John the Rapper. I was turned down for what? <laughs> turned down for what? <laughs> my student loan's okay. <laughs> but I found out the secret. Dude, I was in there one day, man, and I saw this old dude get turned down for a loan. He got pissed. He got up and slammed his hand on the table. Bam! This is preposterous! Who can I talk to? So they wouldn't got the assistant manager, the branch manager, the regional manager, and they ended up giving this guy a loan. So the next time I was in the branch, they turned me down. I said, this is preposterous! Boom! Who can I talk to? She called the security guard, the chief of police, <laughs> and the I did not get that loan. <laughs> but you have fun, right? We shop at the dollar store when you broke. That's going up to $1.25 next year, so now we got to go to the thrift store. <laughs> There's a thrift store right across the parking lot. <laughs> I love shopping at the thrift store, man. Half off Wednesdays. The stuff at the thrift store is cool because it's already broke in. 
The sweater's already got lint balls. The CD's already scratched. <laughs> you know, the bed sheets already got pee pee stains. He's a hope those are pee pee stains. Oh, oh. Y'all laughing. I bought a suit from the thrift store one time, man. Seven piece suit. Came with a jacket, vest, belt, pants, socks, and underwear. They look itchy. <laughs> Y'all laughing. That's the coldest purple suit you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I wore it to church last Sunday, they was calling me Purple Rain. <laughs> they was like, get it, Purple Rain. I was like, <laughs> The kids was calling me Black Joker. <laughs> I was like, man, I put a smile on that face. <laughs> you had fun, bro, though, man. I got a gift one time from the thrift store, man. I was shopping there, and they was selling a Walmart employee shirt. Had to buy it. You know how much fun it is to walk through a Walmart with an employee shirt on and you not an employee? I was tapping on all the employees like the boss wanted to see you in the back and he was not happy. <laughs> I love it when people walk up to you and ask you for stuff. This lady walked up to me with all these kids like, can you tell me where the Pampers are? I sent her right to birth control. <laughs> This guy walked up to me, was all heavy, talking about, hey, you know where the donuts are? I said, sure, sent him right to Sporting Goods. <laughs> and any man that right asked me for directions, any man that asked me for directions, I'm sending him straight to Finneman items. <laughs> if you are a man, you do not need to be asking me for directions. <laughs> they caught me, though, because I was helping a customer take a 50-inch TV out to their car. The customer was me, but <laughs> they caught me. I don't even know why I'm broke, man. I know why I'm broke. God want me broke. <laughs> Cause I'm a comedian. I would do stupid stuff with my money. I already know. Like if God made me a billionaire, I know what I would do already. I would start an energy company, but I would only hire members of the Ku Klux Klan. But I would call my company Black Power. <laughs> Just because I think it would be funny for them to explain where they work. <laughs> hey, Zeke, I heard you got a new job. Where is it that you're working? Black power. <laughs> I would give them a little wristband to have to punch in by holding it up to a light. <laughs> it's not working. Black power, okay. <laughs> I don't even know why this is happening to me. I had a cheap father. Anybody have a cheap father growing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had one of them, you let my heat out fathers. Close the door, boy, you let my heat out. That is July. <laughs> my dad was one of them, eat all your food dads, right? Like, you better eat everything on your plate. One time I ate a plate, I was a... <laughs> He did a garbage audit at the end of the night, every night, to make sure no edible food was thrown away. Don't let this man find a chicken bone with some meat on it. He hold it up to the light. <laughs> Come up to my room, kick the door open, boom, who left meat on this chicken bone? I did, and I would get beat for it. So now I'm a father, I see meat on the chicken bone, I go up to my son's room, boom, kick the door open, who left meat on this chicken bone? Mommy did it. Oh, God. Can you tell her not to do that? <laughs> Cheap father, man. Tell me y'all ever been through this nightmare. My father would take my winter clothes that was too small in the basement with some scissors, and come out a half hour later with my summer clothes. <laughs> Dad, what I'm gonna do with short sleeve corduroy? <laughs> with corduroy shorts. What am I gonna do with a short sleeve turtleneck? It doesn't even make sense. I'm hot and cold at the same time. One time he cut off some purple corduroys for me and sent me outside. I came back in mad. He was like, why you mad, boy? I said, my friends keep calling me the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> My father was the truth, though, man. My father kept me out of trouble by accident. My father had a picture of himself hanging up on the wall in a police uniform, right? So when my friends would want to get in trouble, they would never call me, because they was like, oh, Rob's dad, Popo. We can't call him, right? So my dad got sick later on in life and wanted to thank him. I was like, Dad, I thank you. You don't even realize hanging that picture up kept me out of a lot of trouble. And I just want to thank you for being a police officer in your service. He said, whoa, whoa, boy, hold up. I ain't no police officer. I said, what you got your picture hanging up? He said, boy, that was a Halloween party. <laughs> you didn't see the Indian in the 
the construction worker next to me? We doing YMCA in the picture. I ain't know. <laughs> But because he was cheap, man, it's like I look for cheap. Like, and you know, if I could give you guys any advice if you're looking to get married, marry somebody with similar qualities as you. Like me and my wife, we both real cheap with money. We had a cheap wedding, you know? You ever been to a potluck wedding? <laughs> Mine was. <laughs> Bring a gift and a dish, <laughs> right? People are like, did you have a limo at your wedding? The only limo at my wedding was limonade. <laughs> <laughs> People was like, you was bragging about your cake. You said you'd have the finest cake in Cleveland. Mm -hmm, I had a cake from finest, a grocery store in East Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> that no good cake. <laughs> and now my wife wants to do expensive stuff. And I try to help, you know, black lives matter. <laughs> you know, so I try, you know. She's like, take me someplace expensive. I want you to take me someplace expensive. So I took her to Sunoco. <laughs> What's that gas, like 413 right now? That's expensive, I don't know what. <laughs> Try not to mess with her though, man. She got a temper. My wife asked me one time, would you leave me for Holly Berry? I said, I would kick you into a piranha tank for Holly Berry. Are you serious right now? <laughs> but we do good though, man. We got two beautiful kids, man. They tell you about the terrible twos, but they don't warn you about the terrible twenties. <laughs> right? The terrible twos is like, gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give the terrible twenties is the exact same thing. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give <laughs> I will say, I will say this. It, it was a joy over the COVID to become a grandfather. Clap it up for me, I became a grandfather over the COVID. That's right. You are looking at the proud grandfather of a 17 pound, eight ounce French terrier mixed bulldog. <laughs> you got a terrier? You got a terrier too? No, I want one. Yeah, yeah, that thing is awesome. It reminds me of me. It's little black and think it's tougher than it is. <laughs> I love dogs, man. I feel like if you love dogs, you love dogs. If you love cats, you probably love witchcraft. <laughs> Fungu or something like that. <laughs> Cause cats, ugh. I don't like cats, man. It's just way different, man. Dogs got cool names like Spot, you know, Thor, whatever, you know. Cats got cool names too, they just don't care what it is. <laughs> Snowball! Snowball! She'll come when she's ready. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta warn people, you know, when you're going over a person with a dog house, people ask, do your dog bite? You know what I'm saying, right? Do your dog bite? They don't ask that kind of question when you have a cat. They need to. Does your cat judge people? <laughs> Is your cat a hypocrite? <laughs> one thing I love about dogs, my dad, man, had a dog for years. And one thing about an old black man, his dog got the same illnesses he do. My dad had diabetes, the dog had diabetes. My dad had high blood pressure, the dog had high blood pressure. My dad had sleep apnea, the dog sleep with a machine too. <laughs> One time I seen my dad take a razor blade and cut a Viagra pill in half. <laughs> I'm like, who was that for? Give it to the dog. He gotta live his life too. <laughs> I enjoy being married, man. Let's go back to being married. I had to get married, man, because I was tired of dating, man. Anybody tired of dating? Ugh. Yeah. When I was dating, man, people would try to set me up with people. This guy tried to set me up with this girl one time. Right, she's perfect for you. She funny, you know, she watch your sign, you know, she's perfect for you. She like all the same stuff, she's perfect. Only thing is, she get a little self-conscious because she got a big mansion. I'm like, I don't care. Give me her address or her phone number, I'll go pick her up, we'll have a good time. So I get her information, I go to her house and pick her up. It's just a regular house. I said, my boy said she had a big mansion, so I don't know what's going on here. I knock on the door. She came to the door and had a big beard. I said, oh, what is going on? She, oh, she got a big man chin. I didn't hear him right. So we dated for three months. Saved a lot of money on razors. <laughs> Hated dating though, man. One of the things I hated about dating was meeting your girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. 
You ever be out, fellas, and your girl's ex-boyfriend is walking through the mall somewhere, and he look better than you? <laughs> I walk in with my girlfriend, man. This dude come around the corner, 6'3", covered with muscles, man, looking all good. He see my girl and was like, hey, what's up, little bit, long time, no see, and picked her up and started swinging her around. I said, no, this dude didn't just pick my girl up and swing her around. No, he didn't just pick. I said that to myself because he was a big dude, right? <laughs> she said, this is my new boyfriend, Robert. He said, what's up, little man? And pick me up, too. <laughs> <laughs> I just take it, though. I was kicking my feet and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Get off me. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying, man. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> I enjoy it, though, man. I just enjoy, try to enjoy life, man, being older. Fellas, you know, you heard the first comedian talk about getting checked up, man. Go. Don't waste any time, man. If you over 50 and you haven't had a checkup, I suggest you go. I went in for a checkup and the guy gave me the greasy finger too. I was bent over the table like, what kind of dentist office is this? This is crazy. I came in for a sore tooth and a cleaning. I can't recommend you to nobody. I can't stand my doctor though, man. My doctor is always right, uh, Robert, we need you to lose a little weight. You know what that means, right? I need a fat doctor. <laughs> I am looking for a fat doctor. If you know one, let me know. I want to talk to him over the phone first, because you know how you can tell somebody fat over the phone? They be breathing all hard. <sighs> this is Dr. Johnson. How can I help you, young man? I was like, oh yeah, I'm making an appointment with you. You sound perfect. He was like, well, I'll see if I could fit you in. I was like, you sound like you can't fit nothing. <laughs> Hurry up and put me on your appointment list for you be gone. <laughs> but I think I'm finally gonna do it this year, y'all. I think I'm finally gonna lose weight this year. You know, I'm finally gonna get serious about it because I hate shopping at the big and tall section. Cause I'm not tall. <laughs> so it's just a reminder, right? <laughs> There's a lot of things that I like 3X and my clothes is not one of them. <laughs> the big guitar section is the saddest section in the store, right? It's so sad Taylor Swift is going to make a song about it next year and win a Grammy. You get there, it's you and one other dude. <laughs> they got about five shirts, like, ooh, this sounds good today. <laughs> every time I get there, right? Every time I get in there, it's always these 5X shirts, but for no reason, Popeye is on the front. <laughs> shirts are disgusting. I bought two. <laughs> but get your health together, though, fellas, man. You know, because women do it. Women go. Women go to the doctor. You know, fellas, if you ever go to the doctor and they got that table with the leg holders, what are they called? Uh, stirrups. Stirrups. Why are they on a table? Shouldn't they be on a horse? <laughs> Ain't stairs what you put on a horse? <laughs> I took my wife to a doctor's appointment. She got right in them things. <laughs> Giddy up. Oh, boom. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> she said, I'm used to it. The doctor came in and pulled out this little tube. I don't know what it's called, but what is it called? The little thing. Is it called something? The little... The, spe the speckle, the speckle, the speckle, the speckle, it need to be called an ego shrinker. If they put this thing on your woman, everything get this big, your ego get this big. And I don't know what this doctor is looking at. They got this thing on my woman, man, I can see everything. Old movie tickets, <laughs> change, lint, an old G.I. Joe man, look. <laughs> and even though the doctor can see all this, they still got to pull that big light down and shine it. I asked my wife, are you all right? She said, I'm fine, and light was coming out of her mouth. <laughs> and we about to get into silly season, fellas, so, you know, the elections is rolling around, um, and I want you guys to get out there and vote, you know. It's more important than ever, right? Vote, like, you guys vote? Yeah. 
silly season right now, man. We gotta get out there, man. I don't care what your political affiliation is. I remember how excited I was when Obama was running. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just remember that excitement. I didn't even realize how hyped up people were because I went down to a debate that him and Hillary had. And Hillary had her supporters out in front of the debate hall like, Hillary, they had a little energy, you know, Hillary, they was doing good, Hillary, they had some energy. The Obama supporters was like, Obama, Obama, O-B-A-M-A, -A, vote for him on election day, Obama. And that was the white people. The black people hadn't even got there yet. Be cool, man. Serve your country. I'm a veteran. Yeah. Yeah, they got me with that song in the 80s. Be all that you can be. Cause you can't be in society. <laughs> That's <was> my verse. <laughs> right? And I was in, I served, man. I will say this about veterans. Everybody that served in the military is a hero. But everybody that served in the military didn't have a heroic job. I was a 91 uniform. Anybody know what that was? Underwear washer. I was an underwear washer. Don't groan, you can't fight terrorism in dirty drawers. <laughs> How you gonna fight Saddam Hussein and you're itchy in, the, in, your, in your hind parts? <laughs> it was cool being in the military though, man, because the racism and all that stuff kind of melt away in the military. I didn't even realize this. You know what I'm saying? Like when we was upstairs, like all the brothers, we would be upstairs telling jokes. And one time the hillbilly dude came upstairs and was like, you know, all by himself because nobody wanted to hang with him. But we was like, dude, come on and hang with us. You know what I'm saying? Come on and hang with us, right? A dude that normally wouldn't have hung with brothers, we was like, dude, come on and hang with us. We're telling jokes. And if you, you know, want to tell some jokes with us, it's all good. He said, I don't think you want to know none of the jokes I know. Oh. I said, well, why don't you tell one? Let's see what happens. He said, there was four bears and a nit. We beat that dude down. <laughs> <laughs> he got a discharge after that. <laughs> I don't know, man. All I know is, I feel like that, you know, comedy has been a blessing to me, and I hope that I have been a blessing to you guys. My name is Rob Coleman. I think that's my time. And I appreciate you guys coming out and going live.